everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, Kevin and I have been busy working on our new greenhouse out in the yard for the last several videos, and so I've missed having the opportunity to cook with you guys. So I thought we would take a break from greenhouse videos and I'll bring you into the kitchen with me while I'm making dinner. Today's dinner is actually pretty typical of what I will make for our family for dinner. Most everything is homegrown and for sure today everything is homemade. So I'm excited to bring you some really easy yet flavorful recipes that you can learn to make with the things that you raise, the, mate, the meat that you produce, and the vegetables that you produce on your homestead. So I am claiming this as a farm to table video. We're gonna start our dinner with an amazing meatloaf. But meatloaf takes a long time in the oven and I normally don't have an hour or so to cook something in the oven. So I'm modifying this for our family and for yours and I'm actually gonna be making amazing meatloaf patties. Not just any meatloaf patties. We're gonna be making Italian meatloaf patties that are topped with some amazing ingredients that are gonna make it so tasty. This recipe is so easy and it uses ingredients that I bet almost every one of you has everything in your kitchen right now. I am gonna start off with two pounds of ground meat. Now, we have ground pork right now. It's actually the only ground meat we have in the house. On our homestead, we raise all of our own meat here or we hunt it and we do all the processing ourselves. If we've got ground meat, that means we ground it. But you can use any ground meat that you want if you have beef or turkey, chicken, whatever you have, you can just use it for this recipe. It'll taste great. This recipe is something that I just kind of whip up. I don't follow a recipe, um, I just dump things together. So I'm gonna do my best to tell you the measurements of what I'm putting in here. Um, and then I'll do my best to put that in the description section below. But a lot of this is just what I think will taste good and that's what this recipe is. Okay, we're gonna start off with the meat like I had said. We're gonna add, we're gonna add two eggs. These are our farm fresh eggs. And you don't have to uh, beat them up first. You don't have to mix them up. Put them in there. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons, maybe a quarter cup of some milk. Just dump that in there. We're gonna add some seasonings. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of oregano, maybe a little more. A teaspoon of salt. Now we, we order lots of things in bulk and salt is one of them. We order um, pink Himalayan salt from Azure Standard. So that's about a teaspoon. I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Now I could mince up some onions or pull some out from the freezer that we have from our garden, but I'm not feeling like doing that. So I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of onion powder. I'm gonna prepare two cloves of garlic. Now, one of the cloves I'm going to use in this recipe, but I'm gonna save the other one out for something else we're gonna be making. Now, when it comes to working with garlic cloves, I have discovered that actually a subscriber has sent me two gadgets that work really well with garlic cloves. The first one is this rubbery thing, and this helps take off the paper on the outside of your garlic cloves completely off of there. So I'm gonna do that to both of them. I'm gonna set one of them aside. And then this is a fantastic garlic press. I had one a long time ago that was a real cheap one and I hated it. 
but I've been sent this one. It's really good quality and it works so well. So we are going to use one large clove of garlic minced. And then we're going to add my special ingredient. Now I don't buy breadcrumbs from the grocery store and we make all of our own bread, but it's not a lot. We don't make a lot of bread. So I just don't have bread hanging around or breadcrumbs hanging around for in a recipe like meatloaf. So instead of breadcrumbs, I'm actually going to grind up some old fashioned oats and use that in replace of it. So I'm going to grind up just in my little blender, three quarters of a cup of old fashioned oats. Now having a really small blender in the kitchen is super helpful. I have one that is both a combination, a personal blender, a small blender, and then a, a bigger blender, but they sell just the small blenders for next to nothing at the store. Perfect. So then you just use these ground up oats just like breadcrumbs and mix them all together. I'm actually going to switch to my hand. Sometimes that just works better. So just combine all of this together. Okay, now this is the perfect consistency. Everything is mixed together. Now I do want to say that if you like stronger flavors, stronger garlic flavor, more oregano, more onion, just put it in there. This is not a hard and fast recipe. It's very forgiving and it will taste great. Okay, I am gonna put this in the refrigerator just temporarily while we get some of the other things made for dinner because these are only gonna cook for about 20 minutes once we have the oven preheated, and I just want to be able to take them out and eat them right away as soon as they're done. So I'm gonna let this cool off in the refrigerator before we put them on the pan and put them in the oven. So the next thing we're gonna be having with our dinner tonight is a fresh cabbage salad. Our family absolutely loves cabbage, and we grew amazing cabbage this spring, but it's gone and it wouldn't still be good by now. And that's actually one of the reasons why we are building a second greenhouse so that we can grow cabbage and other kinds of cold weather crops during the cold parts of the year. So the fall, winter, and early spring, and we can have fresh cabbage and fresh veggies all year round, not just in the summer. But right now, I don't have any fresh cabbage, so I am buying it. I want to share with you all that I'm starting to buy some produce from Azure Standard. That's a company that you can order organic products online and they deliver to a meeting point once a month within lots and lots of communities. It's also where I buy a lot of bulk items like all of my rice, beans, split peas, lots of things, seasonings. Lots of things I buy from Azure Standard, and I absolutely love it. If you're interested in learning more, you can check them out, azurestandard.com, and I'll put a link in the description below this video. I want to show you the quality of some of what we've been getting for produce anyway. The cabbage I'm going to be using today is from Azure Standard. I just had my pickup last week. It is an absolutely gorgeous organic cabbage. I've also been buying occasionally some onions. Now we do grow onions in our garden and we dice and freeze them, but sometimes I just want a fresh onion to add to something. So I started ordering just a few onions from Azure Standard. And we also order our potatoes, our white potatoes from Azure Standard. So I just wanted to show you examples of that too. They're fantastic. And so I order from these guys once a month. So on to our cabbage. We're gonna have a kind of small cabbage salad and I'm gonna make a homemade vinaigrette. We don't really like leftover salad like the next day or cabbage salad. So I'm only gonna make enough that I know we're gonna eat all of it tonight with our dinner. And so I'm only gonna use maybe a quarter of a head of cabbage. So 
So I'm just gonna chop this into pretty narrow pieces, almost like shredded cabbage. We just seem to like that shape and size in our cabbage salads. So this cabbage salad is really versatile. You could really throw so many different things inside with the, the uh, salad to make it tasty. Oftentimes I will put shredded carrot in there, cilantro, lots of different kinds of seasonings. Everything just tastes so good with it. So you experiment, don't just do what I'm doing. You uh, experiment at your own house. Okay, so that is shredded. Now we need to make the vinaigrette. I'm gonna measure for you guys, but I don't normally measure, but this is so easy. And it's one of those things that you can really put in your vinaigrette, whatever you like. So we're gonna start with some oil. I'm using avocado oil today. And for measuring purposes, I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup. Now we're probably gonna make way more vinaigrette than we need, but I don't want to not have enough. So if I have extra, I'll just put it in the refrigerator and use it another time. So that was avocado oil. Now I'm also gonna put just a tiny splash of flaxseed oil because it's so good for you. So maybe, I don't know, a teaspoon. So good for you. So as far as oil goes, you can really put whatever kind of oil you like or enjoy. Now we're gonna put in some vinegar. We are using a red wine vinegar, but I use all kinds of different vinegars. We just mix them up, whatever we feel like. So if there's a different kind of vinegar that you like, you just use that kind of vinegar. Okay, so that was a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of honey. We're gonna use that clove of garlic that I set aside. We're gonna mince that in there. We're gonna use some more oregano. Probably, I don't know, a teaspoon we'll put in there. Couple shakes of salt. Same for the black pepper. And then we're just gonna shake it up. So any seasonings that you would like, just put it in that vinaigrette, it will taste so good. If you would like a little bit of cayenne pepper in there, that would be really good too. Just experiment. So that is nicely emulsified. We're actually just gonna leave this in here until we're ready to serve dinner and we'll mix it in with the cabbage salad at that time. But now it's just gonna sit and rest and all those flavors are going to marry together. The last portion of our dinner tonight is gonna to be some homegrown canned green beans. So I'm gonna make them taste even more amazing than they do. We can lots of green beans every summer and we did last year too. So I'm just gonna open these. I'm gonna uh, dump out the liquid, but I wanna show you a gadget that we've been given by one of our subscribers. This is called a Prialid, and this is actually vintage. They don't make these anymore. You can find them on eBay if you are interested um, in finding one of these, but these are really handy for opening up your canning jars that it doesn't damage the lid and it doesn't accidentally chip your canning jar. So I'm just gonna dump out the liquid here. There's nothing complicated about heating up some green beans, but we make it extra special. We add a dab of our home rendered pork lard. It just makes it taste so good. Maybe, maybe a tablespoon, put that in there. Shake a little bit of salt on top. And that is ready for the microwave. Yes, I said it. We use a microwave and I'm not gonna feel bad about that. It's handy. Okay, so we have our cabbage salad all ready to go. The green beans ready to put into the microwave. So let's get our meat patties onto the baking tray and get them in the oven. Now I have preheated the oven to 425. These are gonna take 20 minutes, but after 15 minutes, we're gonna to top them with something 
super yummy to make them extra special. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get eight to 10 patties out of the two pounds of meat that we started with. And this is perfect because it will be enough to have leftovers for lunch tomorrow. So I just take a ball of meat that's maybe a little bit smaller than a tennis ball. And I just smash that down in my hand until it gets to the right thickness, which is maybe, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, half an inch or something. Just put that on the baking tray. Now I forgot to tell you that I greased that baking tray with a little bit of coconut oil because our ground pork is very, very lean. So I don't want them to stick to the pan. We also don't use Teflon pans, so we need to worry a little bit about sticking. Looks like it's gonna be 10 patties, although the last two I made pretty small, just to make sure I could get 10. But that's okay, they look fantastic. Now I just need to wash my hands so we can put these in the oven and there's just one more thing that I need to make and dinner will be completely ready. There are two secret ingredients that are gonna make these Italian meatloaf patties so amazing. The first ingredient is mozzarella cheese. When these come out of the oven at 15 minutes, I'm gonna put slices of our homemade mozzarella cheese on the patties and put them back in so they're nice and melty by the time the patties are, are done. But that's not it. We're also gonna make a wonderful marinara sauce that when we plate them, we can put a little bit of homemade marinara sauce on top. It's going to be amazing. Now on our homestead, we can a lot of our tomato products and I can a ton of tomato sauce. I don't can pasta sauce, I don't can marinara sauce, I just can tomato sauce because it's just so versatile for me. When I need something, I can just take some tomato sauce off of the canning shelf, add a few ingredients and turn it into whatever I need. So that's what we're gonna do today. Here's some of my tomato sauce from the garden last year. We're just gonna doctor it up and turn it into a tasty marinara sauce for on top of our meatloaf patties. I'm gonna start by adding some garlic powder. I should have left out another clove of garlic to put in there. I decided just to cheat and use some garlic powder. I'm gonna add more oregano. We love oregano here, and did you know it is super high? and antioxidants, so I don't feel bad using a ton of oregano. So the garlic was probably half of a teaspoon. I'm gonna go maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half with the oregano. We're gonna add some salt, probably a teaspoon. This is another one of those things that I don't have a recipe written down, and I just kinda guess with the measurements. Let's put some ground pepper in here. What would be good are some red pepper flakes, but I think I'll leave them out this time. And because I'm starting with plain tomato sauce, which is pretty acidic, I'm just gonna add a teensy bit of sugar to bring that down a little bit, maybe a half of a teaspoon. We're actually using raw sugar today. That's just something that we've uh, been turning to besides the white sugar, and uh, this is organic also. So I'm going to mix that up and turn the heat on. I'm going to heat this until it just starts to boil and then turn it off so it can, uh, the, the flavors can combine. And that will be fantastic, just spooned on top of our Italian meatloaf patties. Okay, there's five minutes left on the cooking time. It's been 15 minutes. So let's take these out. They look fantastic. They're almost done, but we're going to put some mozzarella cheese slices on these. Now I'm not going to put it on all of them because some of these will be leftovers and when we warm them up I don't want the, the cheese to melt off all over the place. So I'm just going to put cheese on five of them. Back in they go for the last five minutes. 
only five minutes to go, so now I need to put the green beans in. And now we can mix up our vinaigrette and put it on our cabbage salad. I'm going to start with about half of that. Mix it up and see if it's enough. A dry salad is a terrible salad. I think it could use just a little bit more. That's ready. We just need plates. Well, the patties are done and they look so fantastic. I can't wait to show you. Look at all of that ooey gooey cheese on there. Dinner is completely done. It's time to put some of this amazing food on a plate and give it a try. I'm gonna start with our amazing Italian meatloaf patties. Look at all of that cheese on there. That is gonna be so tasty. Top that off with some of our flavorful marinara sauce. Cabbage salad with our homemade vinaigrette. I need more than that. And our homegrown green beans that have just a tiny bit of our home rendered lard from our very own pigs. So I can't wait any longer. I need to try these Italian meatloaf patties with mozzarella and marinara. They're gonna be amazing. I just know it. They're still super hot. Perfect. And the green beans and cabbage salad. So good, you guys. Well, now it's time for everybody else to try this amazing meal. So I'm gonna get going. You guys, I encourage you to try this. Good food doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be difficult to make. It can be wonderful and easy and healthy for your family. Thanks so much for stopping by the homestead, you guys. Make sure to subscribe and share this video with everybody you know who you think would enjoy it. Until next time, take care and God bless.